Hello chess fans, uh, here is Grandmaster Misha Pub and uh, I'll try to explain in this video lesson what it means uh, to play aggressive chess. Well, usually it's uh, connected with a very nice attacking play with uh, a lot of amazing moves and with some very nice uh, inventive ideas and with a lot of imagination in attack. I hope that I managed to achieve some of those things in this game which I'll show you today. So actually this is one of my best games. It was played back in 2005. I was white and back in those times I was just international master but quite a dangerous one and my opponent was Grandmaster Corsi Dragon very experienced Grandmaster and uh, he played French defense which is one of his favorite openings and he's very well known uh, expert of French defense so I played advanced variation or blockade and okay here they have standard position and uh, usually this pawn on e5 is telling us that white has more space on the king side and white should be ready to put some pressure on the king side or start some attack usually people play or bishop p2 or a3 and then White tries to make use of his nice pawn chain in the center and he tries to uh, put some pressure on the black position and in the long run white should be slightly better and usually white tries to green down his opponent. Well, in this game I chose another approach and I played bishop d3 which is actually a gambit line. Well, of course Black can't take uh, the pawn straight away because if it takes immediately, that's a big blunder. This should be five check, cheap idea, but okay, it's good to know. So we should descend first, and now it's not so good to retreat this bishop. If I go bishop c2 after knight b4, it's gonna be uh, awkward for white. For example, after castle, knight c2, queen c2, bishop b5, black is already slightly better. He has a bishop pair, his bishop on b5 is active now and, well, he has no problems. In few moves he'll finish development and maybe even put some pressure on the d4 pawn. Okay, also bishop e2 doesn't make any sense because I just played bishop d3 and then to go back bishop e2 it's just uh, tempo down, so there is no, no sense. That's why castle and now knight d4. Okay, here we are at the first crossroad and I played a lot of games in this, this style, knight d4, queen d4, knight c3. And this is actually Milner Berry Gambit. And here, white also has some compensation for a pawn. And black is, can also take the second pawn here. He can take queen e5 if he wants to. And then, well, we have some complications. I even played some games in this from this position and I managed to win some of those games. Actually, maybe all of them. Uh, but the main move is a6 and then uh, extensive analysis showed that uh, black should be fine after all. White has some compensation but maybe not enough. So I used this move, knight bd2 and here I'm hoping to uh, to call, uh, okay, I'm hoping that one day this variation will be called Bishop Up Attack. Why? Because I think I was one of the first players 
who started to play this. Actually, not the first one, but I think that I played uh, most of the games in this Gambit, and I made uh, some theoretical contribution. Actually, I published article about this about this Gambit in Chess Informant number 113. So you can check that too if you if you like. Actually, I think that Wild has compensation for a pawn. And uh, why knight bd2? Well, basic idea is just if knight f3, knight f3, this knight is now strong. And it can sometimes go to g5, sometimes to d4. And opening the, the way for the queen in some lines. Queen g4, queen h5 might be possible. So, it depends. Uh, well, black has some other options here, bishop c5, bishop b5, so many moves, possible moves, but okay, today we are not speaking about this opening line, we are speaking about this this game and about attacking an aggressive chess. So knight c6 was played and maybe my opponent was, okay, he, maybe he was trying to show me that knight on d2 is not so strong. But actually, I think after knight b3, knight is quite well placed because this knight can go to c5 and to d4 in some point. At some point, so black uh, needs to develop somehow his pieces, and uh, he is a little bit cramped because this pawn is taking some space from, from black and he needs to decide what to do. For example, if he plays bishop b4 after a3, he needs to go back to e7 or just bishop c5, but now he'll have problems with the dark squares and that's not so good after all. Also, he might try to play bishop e7, but then he'll have problems with this knight. What to do with knight on g8? He can play later on knight h6, but then maybe white will take on h6 and spoil the pawn structure on the king's side. And for black it's quite dangerous to castle on the queen side. So what to do? Knight g2 is 7 looks like a completely normal move. And then black is going to play knight g6 and then develop the bishop and castle. If he manages to play just three more moves, knight g6, bishop e7, kingside castle, black is much better, of course. Because he's just pawn up. <clears throat> and, well, somebody maybe will not believe me if I say that here white has compensation for the pawn. Because, okay, how? How is that possible, you might ask? Because... Black position is so solid, there are no weaknesses. But okay, let's let's check what happened in the game. Bishop b3, of course. Gaining the tempo. Queen c7, rook c1. Okay, now rook c1 pins the knight along the c file. So the pawn on e5 is protected. But after knight g6, pawn is again in danger. Black wants to take on e5, so... What to do now? Well, here white has compensation for the pawn, uh, which can be proved, for example, even in a line like this. Even this move, which is not so good, can prove some, uh, some compensation. If we imagine now that all pieces are exchanged and only this bishop on d7 is left and knight on f3, after some, let's say, knight d4 and pawn to f4, white will have a nice grip on the dark squares and it must be some compensation for the pawn. But that would be a defensive formation. So I, I was hoping for something far more aggressive in this game. But that's why I played knight c5 quickly. And here, actually, if, if black takes immediately on e5, he, he has to face 
taking on d7 or on b7, which might be dangerous. Well, it's not that everybody likes to move his king in the center after just 10 moves or 13 or 15 moves. So, first what he did is quite logical. He traded his bishop from f8, which made only one move to take on c5 for my knight, which made three moves, knight from b1 to d2, then to b3 and then to c5. So actually I made three moves with the knight and just to be exchanged for the bishop. Is that clever? Well, let's see. After bishop c5, knight e5, here black is two pawns up. So actually white sacrificed two pawns. Well, isn't that crazy? Maybe you can say so, but here uh, I just take on e5. You can see that this bishop is quite strong. The king in the center is uh, cut off from the king side, and it's almost impossible to castle now. And of course, queen side castle is out of question because at least I might take even on a7. So on knight e5, it could be possible to play bishop f8 and take on g7, which is very dangerous for black. Even this move is possible with later on some pressure, or even bishop a3 is interesting. So all those moves are, are proving that uh, black has some problems here. So he took with the queen. So he took queen e5 after all. And now it was po even possible to play rook e1. And to sacrifice the third pawn. But okay, I felt it's too much just to sacrifice three pawns. But even this was possible. Okay, so queen b3 was played. And here after b6. Well, I have to keep my bishop on the diagonal, bishop a3. It's very nice to have such piece. And of course, it's almost, uh, well, I don't want to say impossible, but it's completely crazy to castle queen side. This is just a very bad idea. So... For example, I can start with queen a4 or bishop b5. It's, it must be bad. You know? So, black played queen f4, trying to cover the fourth rank and trying to avoid some ideas with queen b4. How queen b4, you might ask? Well, after rook b8, maybe. It's possible to play something like this threatening mate on e7 and and then it's uh, not so simple for black to defend for example in f6 rook c7 and then well it could be losing already so queen f4 and now rook f1 so here we can say that we have a new critical position so, what we can say about this position? Okay, obviously, black is two pawns up. But, uh, okay, those are two central pawns and two protected pawns. But those pawns are not so strong at the moment. And uh, black has problem with his king. His king is stuck in the center. While white has all pieces developed. Queen is on b3 very strong, bishop pair is developed, and both rooks are ready to attack. So this is very very dangerous for black, because white is attacking with all of his pieces, and white king on g1 is super safe. No chance that white king will be attacked. So what to do? Okay, here for a moment, white is still not, not threatening queen d5, because if Let's say, let's just check some move like h6. Queen d5 is not possible because of queen c1 and black wins. 
So black could play something else, but then G3 comes. G3 is a, is a threat, and then maybe Queen D5 will be possible. So I guess my opponent didn't want to wait for that, so he went for King D8, which is mm, uh, well maybe problematic decision, but I don't know what he could try. For example, there is some interesting interesting line. Uh, if uh, black plays f6 here. If black plays f6, uh, white has two interesting ideas. First interesting idea is to play queen d5 now, because if queen c1, then there is queen h5 check, and then I will take the queen on c1, white wins. Another interesting idea is on f6, is just to play a rook c6 sacrifice. And here you'll see how it's, how it's, <laughs> when you have king in the center. Check. And I'm about to take on c6 winning. Black is forced to play this and queen c2. White is winning. Why winning? Because after this check, this, uh, let's say, check and mate. So, black's position is actually very dangerous. F6 is losing on the spot. So, he played queen, king d8. g3, queen f6. And now, okay, he also has some threats. So, he has threat to play knight d4, knight d5, and knight f3, check, and to take on e1. Bishop d6 prevents that. But my opponent played knight d4 anyway. Well, uh, now we will get to the very interesting moment in the game. It's very tempting to sacrifice the queen. Queen d5. Just like that, queen for a pawn. And if e takes d5, bishop c7 check. And mate, isn't it beautiful? Beautiful mate. And I was pretty pleased when I when I spotted this during the game. I actually, I didn't play queen d5. I didn't play queen d5 because bishop c6 wins on the spot, but for black. Why? Because after rook c6 takes check, this takes takes. Black is completely winning. He's threatening to play this and he's threatening to take on c7. Black wins. So, queen d5 is losing, but simple play. Bishop c7. If this, checkmate. So, king e8 is the move. Queen d5. Okay, what to do? Check. It looks logical. And now, well, we can say this is a new critical position. What to do? King g2 is losing on the spot, of course, check. King h1, it looks normal, but then after knight e1, check, king e7, queen h8, check. And queen g2, mate. Another idea, after king h1, check this, white can go back, queen e4. But then check, knight f3, and black is bound up, and he has nice winning chances here. Okay, so after this check, there is only one square, king f1, the only move. Okay, rook c8, and here, well, white has no time to wait, because also his king is a little bit exposed, there are some threats. So white has to be very, very uh, precise here. He has to be very, very fast in the attack. So here is normal move bishop b5, attacking everything. If black takes, then 
after few moves he will be mated or he will lose a lot of material so this is just a losing position so queen e7 the only move and now here in this position I've seen some moves ago I've seen that <coughs> there is very nice line here I can take on d7 take on f3 check and take on a7 and then white has simple idea rook c1 and then rook c7 rook c8 it's possible at least white will get pawn b6 and white has clear advantage the problem is that black king is very weak and actually he can't castle because he played already king d8 and back to e8 so but I was somehow convinced that I can play even better something even stronger and here you can try to find it for yourself you can pause the video and try to find the brilliant winning move for white amazing move I played bishop b6 and my opponent was in complete shock black can take any of white pieces he can take the queen which is immediately losing mate he can take one rook and there is mate he can take the second rook again losing so any any move to take any piece is just losing check white is winning so what to do if this again white wins amazing position I, I don't remember that I've seen something similar in a chess game all white pieces are hanging and black is just completely lost so he played the only move rook b8 and here okay uh, there is nothing spectacular anymore you just have to play also some normal moves in the game you know <laughs> so check and queen f3 here white is completely winning why because still black king is so weak and still in the center and can't escape a b6 rook a d1 L look at those look at those rooks look at those rooks and black king is just within the reach so actually now white managed to get back his two pawns and now in the position with completely even material white is still attacking okay check what to do check okay if he goes back rook c7 wins on the spot king f6 check if he goes back check wins on the spot so white is just completely winning king g6 rook c7 check king g1 he's protecting on f7 okay here almost any move wins even rook d5 is winning somehow i guess but okay let's say the simple move like h4 should win but okay uh, if you have a position like this why not to play rook d to d7 look at this this is completely amazing those rooks on the seven triangle is just demolishing black's position and his king is on g6 hopeless completely hopeless so what to do okay uh, black decided to defend check and now okay if he goes back king f6 check well actually first check here is even better check here check check and mate is quite quite soon mate will happen quite soon yeah in few moves white is just winning so 
after queen g4, king h6, and now rook f7. Rook f7, and here another critical position. I'm. It's very important to pay attention to this position. White is completely winning, but believe it or not, it's still not too late to lose the game. So always you have to be very careful, even if you are completely winning. Even then you have to be very cautious, very careful, because it's never too late to lose the game. So here, after rook f7, check. Check on f1, queen d1, rook c4, black wins. It's completely amazing what's going on here. So, here, white just have to be very precise. Queen e6, check. What to do? Black has not much choice. If rook f6, there is this check, this check, and quite soon it will be made. For example, something like something like this might be possible and well white's completely winning well rook g7 and then it's mate just one of possibilities so queen e6 check the only move g6 rook c8 okay so here what what to say about the position white is two pawns up and completely winning and still attacking the weak black king so what actually happened in this game uh, white uh, sacrificed two pawns in the opening for a very nice attacking position after that uh, in great attacking style white got back those two pounds and even won another two pounds so now instead of being down two pounds white is up two pounds up and completely winning okay after queen b7 well the game finished quite quickly now so queen e3 check king g7 there is no need to go into an end game because after queen e5 check, king h6, rook c4, there is no defense, g5, h4, and black resigned. So I was quite pleased to win against such experienced grandmaster like Kosic in such great style. So I hope that you like this, uh, this uh, material, that you like this video lesson. I tried to explain what it means to play nice attacking chess, actually aggressive chess, because uh, I think that chess is fight and that you have to fight in every game for a win and uh, that you need to fight for initiative and once when you get the initiative you should try and make the most out of it. So try to prove that you can win the game. Well, that's all for now. And I hope that you, you'll see more video lessons from me. Okay.